Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. I hope everyone is, is healthy uh, in these uh, difficult times. I'm uh, Diana campbell Betoncourt. I'm the Artistic Director of the DACA Art Summit, and I am so happy that you're joining us either here now or as a recording in the future to hear more about the work of Shamshul Alam uh, Halal, who is an artist that we've been working with for a long time uh, through the DACA Art Summit and also international collaborations, such as um, an exhibition with the Kunstale Zurich, which we partnered um, with. Uh, and what, through this series of studio visits, we're supporting artists with community-based practices um, to share their work with audiences, both in Bangladesh and around the world, because we think at this time, um, art doesn't just belong inside a white cube exhibition space. It needs to be alive in communities. And something that's very special about Halal's work is he shows that so much of the boundaries we see in life between classes, between religion, between genders are, are basically staged. Like these are, um, maybe the world doesn't have to be like that. And his um, work makes people question where these divisions come from. Um, our assistant curator, Ruxmini, will tell you a bit more about um, Halal's work and how she's worked with him in the past, and um, we'll then leave it to Halal to share more about his practice. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Rusmini Rikmanaki Chaudhry, Assistant Curator at the Samdhani Art Foundation. Um, I've been working with um, Samsul Alam Halal from uh, 2015 when he got selected for the Samdhani Art Award 2016, and uh, then again. Um, he was uh, he was part of the colonial movement section of the Dhaka Summit 2020. So what fascinates me about his work is that he is always uh, trying to push boundaries of uh, the perception of the people um, about uh, the communities, uh, the minority communities. Uh, he has always been working uh, with a working and minority communities in Bangladesh, um, as well as uh, he explores their complex sense of identity in, um, in the society, their dreams and emotions, and he portrays them in a really interesting way, which blurs the reality and um, um, fantasy. Um, I think um, that is quite fascinating. And also, um, um, he comes from old Dhaka, the old part of Dhaka where we actually see the um, people from all classes uh, who mingle together and um, it's quite interesting to see um, his bond with these people. When you see the, uh, his work, you can actually feel the bond between the um, between these people who, um, like, who have been part of his project. So I'll go to Hilal uh, Pai uh, rather than talking about his work because he can talk much better about his work. So Hilal Pai. Thanks Ruxmini and thanks Diana. And a special thanks to Samdhani Art Foundation to give me that opportunity to share my work to the more bigger audience. Mm. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Samsul Alam Hilal. I'm working as a freelance visual artist based in Bangladesh. At first, I introduced with photography as my elder brother working at, as my elder brother was practicing photography in 2019, or 96. So that time I had I had a fascination, I had a dream that I want to be a photographer because I saw that my elder brother, how he doing photography. So that time I, that time I talked to my family that I would like to be a photographer. I want to be a photographer. But somehow my parents and they do not like to this. They said, my parents said that your elder brother is a photographer. You have to do some other job. So I'm thinking that what to do, but I'm somehow I'm grown up with photography and now I'm now I want to be a photographer, but my parents are not agree with me. Later on, I somehow I manage my family, manage my parents. Then I then I started to study photography at Pakshala in 2000, 2000 
2009. So in in Patshala, I complete three years photography program. So this Patshala also I learn a lot from Patshala, and it is a it is it is a big photography maybe, hello, school. Maybe okay, perfect. Yeah, I was just going to ask you to share with some of our visitors what Patshala is. Okay. So it is it is it's a big photography school in Bangladesh and also it is not like a, a not like to like an institute or academy like uh, from others uh, it's not like a, this kind of it's kind of the photograph patshala photography school is more about it's like a family and all the teachers and students senior junior they have a kind of a kind of a relation some something so I complete my photography program. It's 2012. Still, I have contact with Patshala. Sometimes I, 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 I have work as a curatorial assistant. Sobi Mela Photo Festival. So Patshala also organizes Sobi Mela Photo Festival. So that time, so always, always I'm just waiting for that time. It's like in February. So that. That time is like two festival will happen. It's Patshala organizes a Sobimela Photo Festival, and also Samdani Art Foundation organized the Dhaka Art Summit. So it's happened one after another. So every year I'm waiting for this February. This is a big. Uh, I save my time for that that month for this festival. So the, and I learn it Patshala, lot and the Patshala that is space I can, I can, I can. I can travel, I can travel and I can experiment more. Say like, for example, my principal, it's, uh, his name is Shuhidul Alam. He's famous writer and photographer and curator and artist. And he said that you have to use every space in Patshala. And if you need, you can sleep, sleep here. If you need, you can sleep in Patshala. So this is, for me, it's a big dialogue that, that I have, a, it's not like an academy, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a relation, it's kind of a family. Anyhow, that Patshala organized also some of international workshop. So it's a, it's a really nice that I had learned from that workshop and then institute. So it's helped me to shape my work and also it's helped me to like be myself. So. So this is for me is important, and one of my teacher, his name is Moses. So he basically said that. So every is in class, he said that. A lot of time he said that, like every people talk different way. So when people going for taking photograph, then all the photograph look like similar. So you are not talk like with someone others. So you have to your own, you create your own language. So this dialogue for me is really important and helped me to shape my work. And this is nice that I, I got the opportunity. I'm lucky that I like uh, study in Patshala. So, so I think that, so I think that photography for me is a, Photography for me as an experience of time, experience of space, and human existence. So I, I like to do stage photography and make fiction to question the reality. And in my recent practice, I do photography, video, and installation. So I'm going to share some, today I'm going to share some of my work. So I'd like to, now I'm going to share my screen, then let's see some of my work. Hmm. So I told you that, uh, I, I made some of images. Uh, uh, I made some of images in, in the in the uh, X-ray film. So this is the negative of that word. 
I talk about my Patshala. This is that. This is my this uh, class, and in the middle of my teacher, his name is Shobhoshasi Hazra. So I like to. I'm really happy that always when I talk photography and I'm just give my previous thing, so it will be help to understand my work. So basically, I like to work on working class people and marginalized people in Bangladesh. Because uh, I don't, I'm, I'm grown up older. So there is multi classes people working together and living together. So there is, uh, from there, I, from there, I saw a lot of things. It's like the working class people, how they live, how they struggle, how they, how they, how they thinking or what uh, about their dream. So a lot of time I talk with these people on the street, on the restaurant, and some places. So I made this work. This is the image of uh, this is the image. This is the. Mughal miniature painting. I took it from Artnet uh, Art India. This is the painting of Agbo the Great and, and his wife Judabai. So I made one work of interreligion relation. So I'm just I'm just researching that how that interreligion interreligion relation uh, history so i researched and i found really interesting to show that image that in during mughal period mughal emperor muslim mughal muslim emperor got married with princess this is for me is a this is i show that image for understanding the situation in mughal time so, then it's a the partition of India in 1947. That time we saw the partition divided two countries, Bangladesh, uh, India, and Pakistan. And this divided based on religion. So for that, that lot of people from India, that Muslim people went to Pakistan. And from the Pakistan, a lot of Hindu people came to India. And and it's it's a big conflict that time during that partition. So you can see that image here. So it's like during that partition, that conflict happened with Muslim and Hindu. So that time it's like uh, it's almost like two hundred thousand people that died. And and almost 20 million people were displaced in in that time. So I'm I'm just show that image to understand that situation of religion, like from Mughal period to British period and recent time. So I made this I made this work. Uh, it calls Ranoi Lover. So. Ranoi Lover is a Ranoi Lover talk about interreligion couple in Bangladesh. So in in South Asia, in South Asia, it's like mainstream society, they do not accept this interreligion relation. And they they never receive this kind of relation. So if anyone, so if anyone get relation with interreligion girl or boys so that time they they break their relation with their family with the society they run away from their family and they fighting to live coexist and living together so and i i found is really interesting for me that it is it is really good example for for recent time that how they living together they have no problem that the problem is the society so i made this work in 2016 that time i i got 
I, I got an award from WordPress photo. It's called Jukesuart Master Class. So that time they selected 12 photo photographer around the world and I gave a theme. So I forget the theme, but and that time I produced this work. So that time I, th I thought what to do. That time it's 2016, there is a lot of, lot of like if, um, conflict happen. It's called, it's called uh, religion, religious extremists doing a lot of conflict. So I'm thinking that for me, I'm, I'm think I see this thing different way. I see it's not a, it's not a religious conflict. It's a kind of political conflict for me. So that time I thought that this is the good time to show the religious couple how they live, how they exist, how they're fighting. At the same time, people can understand that the beautiful relation of this couple, they have no problem. So this, that's why I made this work. Let's see some of work then talk. So this image is a burning floor. You can see that the left image is burning floor. So it's a kind of a symbolic, I just try to make a metaphor image, which is collect, which is collective knowledge and collective idea from that i made this metaphoric image so this kind of a thing that there's the the threat of interreligion couple and also we saw a lot of time in the newspaper in the tv news media in india in pakistan sometimes in bangladesh there's that the parents that killed their son because of they got relation of interreligion and they married interreligion interreligion couples that's why they killed them so this is the kind of symbolic way to understand that beautiful flower is burning that way and at the right image this is this is couple so this is important thing that how i connect the visual here and i found some of some of my friend and also i i went to some of some of uh, welding program it's like a very close program because nobody they do not share when they got married and also they there is a law that they get married by the special law so and also in that in that marriage law there's both are declared that they have they are they are atheist they do not believe on any religion so this is also difficult to like how I say and this is really difficult that uh, when if they get they want to get married they have to sign in this kind of rule uh, after that they got married by the special law so by the way I found this couple near my area where I live and I talk with I have some of good friends who got married and this interreligion relation and who had a, who had interreligion relation so i talked to them and several times i talked to them and and also some of some of my friend uh, always talking about how they live how they how they hide their face how they how they hide their name in the society because when they go out there's or uh, meet some relative that time they someone like hide their name because their their parents and their relative like can don't know that they got married and this is a, if you say that hindu name or like if you're like if you say like your partner like hindu name it's like a, a conflict and also they're thinking different ways. A lot of conversation also some of my friend and then I made this work. It's like a typical traditional wedding night. So they, they come at night. The room is set. The room is 
with a full of flour and then take some drinks sweet drinks and I'm thinking that it's a kind of a symbolic way. And sometimes it's like a. I'm not thinking. I think it's something else. I, something others drinks. And uh, I think the religion, one of the religion is story from this this couple. They they how they fall in love. So I think that uh, no, they said that basically first met in in. Hello, another, I think there's an issue with your internet connection. Your um, the audio is, is very very fuzzy. Can you check your your connection because we couldn't really hear what you just said. Okay, well, let's see. Yes, I'm checking my. I think I I'm just stuck my some others device so it will be a bit faster now. Let's see. I think now it will be. I hope it will be now work better because I I stop some of my in net some of my others device. Yeah, you sound better now. No. Okay. So I heard that that the beautiful story from this couple and also a shocking uh, i don't know it's a, somehow it's a, like a filmy it's a, like a, when i when i heard that story it's like a movie it's like a film so that couple said that that they met first time in in some wedding program in their area but when they fall in love they they did not they did not ask their name they did not ask their religion so this is interesting for love is really love is really nature of part of nature no, but the but in in the system in the society put the rule and resolution so i think this that the story is really nice that when they got when they got relation so after that they know their religion so then they then they then they said they are like some of people in their family but they said that no you cannot do this kind of relation you have to stop here then they run away then they break the relation with the family they run away that that area they go to some other place for living and so still they're living nicely so i just made this kind of image so i hope that story is really for me it's a the story is like a movie so i made this so i made this some other images to highlight that issue and show that how they exist how the society so this is kind of a symbolic image that you can see then the left the prison are locked in the case so this is basically the same uh, how they live here in dhaka in bangladesh and uh, basically they are in the lock they are not open at the same time that the prison are like a symbol of freedom something like that so when i made that images so basically it's a kind of a kind of a connection from like a collective collective knowledge collective experience collective like knowledge collective from so in the right side image you can see that the image that the the hiring face so this this is my good friend the this couple so it's sometimes it's pain that it's pain in a way that like <clears throat> lot of like threat come from outside and it's really difficult to keep that relationship for the long because a lot of things happening and sometimes some couple are like uh, break their relationship break their so this kind of uh, another um, uh, symbolic image that you can see that the broken glasses 
and this kind of a symbol of like conflict this kind of a sim symbol of that uh, break the relationship and in the right images you can see there's there's some of candle and there is some of ribbon also you can see there is some of ribbon so this there is some of places people people like to go in 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 that places and people make a wishes and then they binding the ribbon so i found some of places in dhaka and also silet and some other places so that place are really spiritual places it's a as a some of some of majar in bangladesh i i don't know say how to say in english uh, majar so this is the so that place is basically a lot of people go there it's like hindu muslim christian and they make their they make their wishes and binding their ribbon together here so i found this is really interesting that image that image tell me that's the that's the does the it is when people said that it's a religious conflict i said no that way that the image say my experience said that does there no like a conflict with this religious it's a political for me so that image is really important to show that this a uh, lot of people go together for making their best wishes and i made that show in kunthale zuri uh, 2017 so that that project supported by sandani art foundation for that exhibition and for my travel and kunthale zuri uh, made this exhibition that time so that time i put that images in in the, in the two floor so there is two floor and i put the burning that uh, one of uh, uh, motion image burning flower i put that image in the in a monitor and put some other images with that with that monitor so this is uh, this is really interesting for me that how i made this work here in bangladesh and i exhibited that work in like switzerland and how the people so this is really for me is a really good experience to talk to outside of the people that how they connect how they thinking so i talk some of people and okay they they gave me good interpretation i don't know uh, somehow they gave me good interpretation that they can uh, they can feel it something they can so one of my one of my so one of my friend live in switzerland so i asked him that how you connect them they said that, he said that he said that for me it's a kind of a poetic it's a story it's a it's a like a book i see that way and i can found that thing that this is something is not going good or uh, well so this is for me important to how people connect outside of bangladesh i made another work it's called open stage and so open stage talk about dolit people in old dhaka so dolit people basically working as a sweeper in the city and it i i like to always go back and forth because i in the present situation i i thought that the if i if i know the more detail of present situation i need to go back i need to go the history then i understand the thing so uh, during that during that work i researched some material and i found this is important information that that the british government in 18th century british government brought them from india to bangladesh for cleaning the city 
And, and maybe, Halal, we should give a little bit of background about um, Dalit people and also, you know, so basically the, it's, it's part of the caste system in, in Hinduism, right? Where the, the lowest caste, I mean, so yeah. Dalits is how we know it in South Asia, you know, maybe in, when I grew up in America, we were told like the untouchable caste, but basically mm -hmm. these people have the most uh, the jobs such as, you know, cleaning the sewers, sweeping the streets and, um, in kind of you know they're very marginalized like for example they're not supposed to use the same dishes or fork cups of people they're not supposed to come into contact with other people um they're very very marginalized and so they were imported into bangladesh as workers by the british which is am i correct yeah yeah this is great yeah. that you add some input from this really right and um, i think yes this is really great to know that these people as living in a big compound in Dhaka and it's like a it's like a five or six building and there is like 5,000 room in this five building and nobody like to contact with these people because they are doing this job they're thinking that they are untouchable even they are Hindu people even the Hindu people do not like to contact and make any relation with these people because they they're doing this job and recently recently and they're, they're doing this job because they're born into it you don't have a choice yeah yeah this is right they don't have a choice even there's a that the system uh, now they are in cities in bangladesh but in the system it's like you cannot go it's like a higher official job there is some of like a system that you cannot cross that that the stage, and it is really hard to find that other job. So that is easy for them, and then it's like some kind of isolated in the camp, and there, so they have no contact or they have no like a relation with others. So it is very difficult to doing other job and and also there is a sum of system that you cannot do a lot of job and also people are not so how i started that project now i came to the point that how i started that project is really important that the first interaction of my work that in, in 2010 or 11 i saw this i saw in my neighbor in my area there is one of restaurant so one of people came to the restaurant, brought their plate and cup, and they take tea. And I'm really, I'm really surprised that I'm really, uh, that time I don't know that why they brought that cup and plate. They can take tea for, as like general, general people take tea in the restaurant. So later on, I asked to that restaurant, the manager and the manager said that no the, the restaurant is not allowed for them to take the tea in the in the restaurant cup or use the restaurant plate so i found is really uh, is shocked and and sad that so after that i'm thinking that might be i'll i then i research on more detail then i visit their camp in old Dhaka. And I made a good relation with some of people. That time I, I thought that they're really, they're really good that if someone go in the camp and then they make the relation. Because when I entered the camp, so at first I met like two or three people. After that, they all, this two or three friends introduced me to the whole camp. This is my like this is my friend. This is my friend. So they they are just feeling like well. They are just feeling very well that they, if they introduce with the, someone outside from outside. So I found this really good thing. Yeah, they really welcoming for others people, but others people never go to that camp. Even never like contact with these people. So this is also important that several times we saw the newspaper and the media that the image how the image published the cleaning the drain the cleaning some way 
so i thinking this is this is really also important how to show these people this is already this is the big gap with the mainstream society i do not like to see show that kind of images and this is not should be the identity for the people only job and i shoot some others then i then i thinking then i made a travel studio so it's a kind of for me it's a kind of for me that show their show their dignity so show their power show their color so this is kind of thing sometimes i am i am gave the direction for these people and sometimes they gave direction themselves so this kind of a combination of the direction of and then they pose and take that images so i made this red canvases for my travel studio and for the third of like lot of thought this is the color they i i visited that camp i found really interesting color that which color they love is basically more or less primary color red yellow blue so i and also it's a kind of a symbol or representation of the violence that uh, red color and there is different places from different part of the world and some places are this color is for for happiness or something but i i use that uh, color for that reason that the show the, the how they like that color and the the violence of that cultural thing so several time i visit that places i found this so there is lot of wedding program going on uh, uh, so i talk with some people that i would like to take pictures and this is good thing they they got married only with their caste and only with their camp because of because of they are not like uh, even they are not talk or connected or not no relation with the outside so how they got married with outside of the camp so i made these images here and that faces is like in the rest against this is also important they when they go to the so i told you that why they take the take the plate and cup in the restaurant that time they are doing job in in that area so they have a, some kind of dress so when they like when they they are not working several time they are hiding their identity hiding their hiding their space and somehow it's like a wearing the masks so i am found it really interesting i asked to and talk to these people and found another story is like when this when these kids are going to the school in the camp to the outside school then their parents said never told your address and never like uh, told your proper try to hide your name so this is shocking for me so i think this is also it's a how to say it's the, these people are really really sh and this is not uh, this is not like a uh, it's not like a living well that there's a lot of pressure a lot of threat that when yeah. you go to the outside so they're kind of stuck thing. in a frame of a time so for people not familiar with this when halal is saying they're hiding their names like last names and names carry religious and um caste uh attributions but bangladesh doesn't have a caste system for example so by now these people should have been integrated into society but they're kind of stuck in an old frame and i think it's so interesting how you kind of create or through your work here a new frame to consider your identity outside of that um cast uh that kind of jail of a cast thank you dana for add some information so again i found really interesting that places they living their places they there's some of pigeon so i'm fascination 
for always like pigeon i'm using this the pigeon in a lot of my project because i'm working for this like marginalized people and for the pigeon for me uh, uh, it's a kind of a symbol of freedom or something and that's why i when i found that pigeon in near my working space i take that shot so this is really interesting that the two pigeon and in the right side images twin sister i found also twin sister in the camp so when i travel in the camp so i visit some of family talk to them and invite them to my studio and i said that it is a like feel it's a studio that so you have to come your way i'm just a, as a photographer just shooting you photograph how you direction get the direction so i said to you that before that i always i made this work it's a kind of a collaboration of direction so sometimes i gave the direction sometimes they gave the direction so this is important when i said that i like to take you for us that they're doing that did really nice makeup with and um, nice dresses wearing nice dresses and i found this interesting to show this like two pigeon in the left and two twin sister in the right and i found this so people can understand people can connect the life of color and like the face and the face is not so i try to like it's not face is the behind the soul you just feel it that the this twin sister so it's lovely like lovely portrait i hope this that that work is connected with the people and is important for me again i made this show in dhaka art summit 2016 and that time i put that red that the red canvas also in my exhibition so this is this is came from really nice conversation with my curator uh, daniel bowman so he's he's really nice curator i seen ever as like during our installation every work he he and me experiment lot of way so that time we thought that how to like present interesting way so in a we have a bit confused with the red canvas but uh, but finally we we put the red canvas and the images here so that time we did not think about like more like about the connection of the audience so this is a like uh, not so much like uh thinking of that but when i exhibited this work i found is interesting thing there's lot of audience take picture with the red backdrop and this is kind of a serial and uh, so i found later i found this thing interesting that lot of people taking picture and they are posting on the facebook and social media so i think somehow this this connect uh, somehow this all these people are come in a certain certain point so this is for me i thinking that after that exhibition i thinking this is really uh, good that thing that the, a lot of people taking picture and they like so they kind of mix up with these people and this kind of thing is came out from that exhibition so and also day by day i develop my work i put the red canvas i put the video i put the sound my others work so i said you at first i study photography from patchala and later i found from it's like 2016 i did lot of workshop in dhaka art summit and i exhibited here so i am thinking that also for me is so dhaka art summit is the invisible art school for me because i learning a lot from that from that festival there's a lot of curator lot of artists came here and day by day i develop my skill so this is kind of a thing that i found is really interesting that develop develop my art practice
later I, I made another work on indigenous people it's called DJ pairing roots so DJ pairing roots talk about indigenous people and hill tracks of Bangladesh there is 11 minority living there uh, such as uh, such as Chakma. 11 ethnic uh, minority groups so there's much more than 11 it's a, it's a big community um, but yeah, uh, yeah. so there's a sum of group is named Chak, such as Chas, Chakma, Marma, Tripura, Morong, Rakhine, uh, some others group living together. But the thing is there is, uh, and that, that place is southeast, southeast part of Bangladesh and it's a hilly site and, and from that group, the Chakma group is bigger than compared than other group and it's a bit more, more powerful compared than other group, the uh, Chakma community. And I made and I saw several times in the newspaper, in the TV and some other place and also I visited that places and I, I, I observed that place how how the shifting, how the changing the landscape, how the changing the people, so and how the displaces. So a lot of time we saw the newspaper news that burning, that conflict happened, and someone, uh, uh, someone are missing. So from that time, uh, I I did some, I did some research on uh, interrelated uh, 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 displacement. How, when the displacement started in the hill tracks so i found that i found that interesting image and information that it is 1962 that the pakistan pakistan government made the kaptai dam 1962 so that time for making this dam in Rangamati, that place, it's like 100,000 people living there. The most of the people are Chakma community. And that house, you can see that house, that house is, is a Chakma king place, submerged with the Kaptai Lake. And also the displaced 100,000 people. And this most of the people are Chakma community. So I think this is, understand the thing that if that the bigger community are displaced so what else what happened with others like group of people there so this is this is i found that image and later on i am developing my work and i uh, i found another another information that the, the CST pitch accord was signed on December 2, 1997, but still that is not fulfilled. It still is not uh, working well. And this is the map of that place. It's a Khagrasuri, Rangamati, Bandarbon. So this is a, uh, so it's still that pitch accord fine in 1997 but it's still that there is uh, there's a lot of military activities there and so to give you an example like foreigners cannot go there like it's a place that's um very much controlled by the military so it's not really clear what's in there because it's um it's kind of you know one it's, it's a hillier it's not easy to get to but it, it's purposely kind of obscured from public view yeah so in the in the, basically in the pitch accord that uh, 1997 that time the that one of the point is the government made that made that contract that they said that the, they will withdraw the all the uh, militaries in the, from that places but it's still there have there in that places. So that the Chakma Royal Place, I found that the, the 
how so later on i am researching i try to find try to find that whole images of the shark Khan royal place so i found that the images um from from chakma chakma king uh, his he used uh, he he shared that image several times so i found from there and i made a, i made a so i'm thinking that how to how to show the how to show the that 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 house is now now we cannot see that house anything of that house because whole house is underwater so, so when building this dam what like what used to be above water it's now this massive lake so tourists go or you know people that can go in there go on the lake it, it's completely that the fact that a royal palace and a symbol of a community is submerged it is not visible on the surface there it just looks yeah. like a beautiful lake to spend mm -hmm. leisure time on yeah the, thank you dana for uh, this information so this is really the and also people don't know that there's a lot of tourists go there and they don't know this that this in this the history that, that, that there is a world place so this is right uh, this is also good information that this is pathetic this is so sad for these people when that that people are dancing in the lake and it's a uh, for that for that people this sh shocking that this well, later on so i'm thought that how to show that uh, that house uh, in the underwater so then i i made plan found that old images and i from that old images i made the i made that dummy uh, it's a uh, two feet wide and one feet high um, so one of my friend uh, who is architect who helped me for uh, make that layout design that uh, that dummy then we go for the as a laser cut pin and then we made it and later on i do some work so and also i add some information to understand more the more information of i i think this is important to know that the experience of of these people that time how they and how they thinking of that uh, about the displacement and the kaptai lake so one of victim her name is piyavala chakma he said that one day i heard someone saying all of these framing lands in our village will be submerged and another line is important for me i made it yellow color you can see that because of the kaptai dam i know only because of this dam our family has been destroyed forever so this is understand that what happened so that time uh, during that uh, kaptai when that kaptai dam made after that 40 to 50000 people went to india because they are not feeling they are not feeling safe here they're not feeling like good place for live there and they they miss their ancestral land they miss their nature they miss their forest they miss their like a uh, culture because it's now whole thing is underwater so they're not feeling that safe they're thinking that it's the threat and there's like 40 to 50 thousand people went to india so that's why that priyabala chakma said that that her family also some of people went to india and other places and, and there's some in myanmar as well which is really interesting yeah. because these communities didn't know you know borders were put over their lands they they weren't originally from any of these countries it was a community without borders and it was also interesting how like i'm looking forward to seeing this video with you but we showed halal's work in the context of a work by the chinese artist Liu chuang who was showing how actually many hydroelectric dams across Asia are on indigenous land. So the story of Bangladesh and the dam and displacement is not unique to Bangladesh. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I thought that, so I found this thing, the displacement started from 1962. Uh, like after, so it's still, it's happened several way we saw that lot of like a conflict happening there and lot of things happened there 
which is not acceptable, which is not good for them. We just try to show that a symbolic way to how the displacement going Akma Royal Place dummy, and I also put the sound. So I collected that sound from, I recorded that sound. You need to Hello, your voice is breaking up. Yeah. You need to fix your, or turn off your devices. Internet, yeah, I saw that it's, it showed the poor. Mm. So maybe, I, uh, can, should I go to near the router? I don't know, then I need to change the space. This, this is better, let's try, let's see how it goes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm just going to... No, hello, I think right now it's working. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's play the video. Oh, oh. So I put the sound. Let's see the video, then we will talk. So I exhibited this work in 2019 in National Art Gallery in Bangladesh. That time a lot of people asking that about that video. A lot of people said that, is it real house? I said, no, this, this is not real house. This is uh, that I made this dummy of the video. And this is also important. There's a lot of, lot of students visit my exhibition. There's a lot of people don't know that the, Actually, that's the this story about the Chakma Royal Place, which is which was like submerged 1962. Anyway, then I I made a one chair. So for for my collective thinking process, that I thinking that the that the King Place is submerged in the lake, and then now I found the chair. So I took the reference from the Chakma Royal uh, Throne and i made this chair and i travel with the chair in the hill tracks and sometimes it's like empty spaces so i put this chair in the empty spaces like in the lake there is no people and now the chair is searching there where are the people from this place that 1962 so i made another portrait of the of sister, two of sister in Rangamati. So somehow sometimes that, that I found sometimes that this girl are threatened by several way. And a lot of time we saw that the rape happened and a lot of, lot of things happening with, the, with that girl. So I just symbolic way to made the image 
that the two sister without face and they're not will they're not like to show their face because of there's a lot of lot of thing happened with them and i also made that image as a plastic flower with the natural natural flower so it's a kind of a thing that so when i see that the indigenous people and hill tracks so it's a not only that indigenous people in the hill there they have a good they have a relation with the nature they have a kind of relation with the like bird and others animal with the in the in the hill tracks so i'm just made that image is metaphoric image that the natural flower is dying and the plastic flower is shining there And also, I put that I, uh, I made that image as like burning one red cloth here, left side. And I took the I took the ref color reference from the Buddhist monk using that using that cloth. Uh, that I just take the color from take the reference color reference from there, and then I made then i then i brought that red cloth and burning hair so and and the right side image there's a one couple so i uh, this is interesting that this couple they living in that hill tracks and they have a kind of a cultural system they got married they have a totally different system in like from the city life when they got married they are just like uh, binding with the with the gamsa I would say it's a, it binding with that cloth, and they, and then elders, elders and family are asking to the other people, hey, this couple are going to get married. Do you accept this? And then people are said that yes, we are accept. So this is the system. So I'm just, I'm just showing that the images that. So it's sometimes it's showing that this is, uh, uh, the binding and it's a. Uh, kind of a relation with this couple and also sometimes it's feeling that they're in the risky places and i made some negative i made some print on x-ray film it's a waterfall sequence so i made the print and put the red color through the water and i made that light box of the sequence images the eight light box so this also important for me that to show that uh, when the tourists are traveling in the hill track they see the beauty of the beauty of the waterfall beauty of the hill but i don't know i just try to explore i just try to explore to show that the the behind the scene of waterfalls oh, i made that exhibition and that time i put also install here there's the installation shot another installation and i think shot. it's also great that you included the chakma language here and also like for some background information like the word bangladesh means the land of people who speak bangla but there's other indigenous languages such as chakma um that are you know being obscured so kind of like the kind of like the palace under the lake like unless this is taught this will be lost also yeah this is also important that how we thinking also this kind of uh, thing is like english and bangla and chakma so you know the the like a, some kind of a history like the british period and then the bangla and then the local language so somehow I put, I just try to like place their language in my show. And that's why I'm using this thing. And there's another installation shot. Great. Thank you so much, Halal, for, for sharing this powerful body of work with us. Um, 
so I guess, you know, we've now been going over an hour. If anyone from the audience has questions, if you could put them, uh, how much, do, are, you, are you finished, Hello? or do you have more slides? No, I have, uh, this is the last slide. So this work I exhibited also in the Dhaka Art Summit 2022. So this is the installation shot of- 2022? Oh, 20, I hope. 2022. I can't wait till 2022, but we think the next summit will be in 2023. So, I install that work in different way here. So this also always I explain and through my work and learning, try to learning something new and this thing. This really good thing that I got the opportunity again in the Dhaka Art Summit and I show that work and talk with a lot of people. And it's a meeting with a lot of artists, curator, and this is a wonderful opportunity for me. This, and this and thanks for that Dhaka Arts and Samdhani Art Foundation. So I'm thinking this is my last slide. Thank you to all that here for almost one hour. So if you have any question or comments or feedback, please ask me or give me your feedback or comment. Yeah, well, we have a great Thank question from Falguni here who was actually at Dhaka Art Summit. Um, helping to produce Bharti Cares project. So her question is, or her, her um, comment and question is, thanks Shamshul for bringing to our attention the history of South Asia. The image of the two sisters and the pigeons really stayed with me. I wanted to know about your working process with Daniel. Was there a lot of archival research involved in the open stage process, say about how the British, what were the British policies that brought these groups into Bangladesh, as was I imagine in the submerged dam project. Um, so before you answer this question about your archival research um, process, I, I can share that, you know, research is super important for Halal. Like he did a research fellowship at Harvard, which is where he found a lot of source imagery. Um, Halal, why don't you, you share some more information with us about this part of your practice? Halal, do you understand yeah. the question? Uh, uh, can, you, uh, uh, can you say it again? Yeah, in shorter terms, what is your research process to find oh. out about these British policies, Mughal policies? Like, sh share a bit more. Maybe you can talk a bit about your Harvard fellowship also. Uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, I did research on through uh, online through the some of book and talk with like researcher, activist, and journalist, and. And I made a short research on interreligion relation um, in my fellowship program at Harvard University, 2018. So that time, that time, so this is the fellowship program is very nice. I exhibited there uh, my work and give a speech for about my uh, practice, and and they have and also the they gave that kind of a assignment that you have to make a short research. So that time I made that short research on interreligion couple. So that time I found interesting like Mughal miniature painting in the Harvard Art Museum and in the Harvard Library. And there's a lot of uh, like book and information also. So that time I, uh, I just try to go back and so I'm starting so so and also this is important for make that uh, short to like research the timeline so where uh, so how I put so I put the timeline from the Mughal period to recent period so I'm I made this work I made the work Ranveer Lava about interreligion couple this is a recent time was going on and then I put the timeline it's like Mughal period it's like 16th century so it's a, then I saw that a lot of Mughal miniature painting uh, there. So I found that how the, that the painting show that how the relation of that time with the Hindus and the Muslim. And then I found that uh, images that the Mughal, uh, Mughal emperor and the uh, Rasput princess. So this is this is really good for me that I did that short research on there. And 
I also and also I read some book when I when I did the project of disappearing roots. That time I read that book. I I I told you I showed that book one of page from that book. So and and also talk to these people and talk to the politician, talk to the activist. So this helped me to go in depth my research. And so this is the this is the way I do I did that research. But I think it's great, like by contextualizing this in time, you really help people understand that their experience right now is, is, is not unique. They're not alone. Like you're, you're connecting kind of struggles over time, but also across communities and, um, and class barriers. Um, so another question from Monon. Hi, Monon, by the way, um, is which uh, Dalit colony did you visit while shooting the Open Stage Project? Oh, I... I uh, I been I work on old Dhaka. It's a, it's a, it's a near Bongshal. So uh, it's near the Bongshal. This is a big camp. So I work there. So there is some of others camp in in others places. So I did this work in 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 that camp near the Bongshal. And I had a good relation with them, uh, so it's also it's a it's also it's important to build the relationship. So I cannot go like uh, uh, it's very hard that go to the another camp and make the relation. And also it's it's important that uh, before that shooting you have to got access from the community from the elders people. So that's why I just did that work only that can. Thank you, Anon. And maybe for like a last question to wrap this all up, are you continue, do you continue to collaborate with many of the people that you've met in these various projects? And these are just, it's just a highlight of some projects. You've done many other projects like these uh, in terms of their, their spirit. But um, yeah, do you, are these long-term collaborations that continue over time? Are you planning to continue to work with these people in the future? Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that so. I'm just how can I say as recently. Recently, I'm just try to make a dummy book of uh, DJ pairing roots. So that time I thought that that time I thought now I thought that I need to I need to more images for that for the dummy book. So might be uh, so might be I I'll go there for doing some more work for my book so yeah I, and also sometimes i'm when i thought that when i have any idea when i think and and got any idea or thinking that it's a you know the instantly happen that a lot of time it's like i saw that a lot of time uh, I complete my uh, one of project is called Love Studio. It's 2012. After that, it's like 2016. I'm also shooting for that uh, work. So sometimes uh, I found some interesting idea and got the interesting found some interesting visual. Then I made a plan and go to that place taking that picture. And also in this time, I'm doing my new work. So during that new work, I stop others work. So if anything came to my mind, I just wrote in my diary and other places. And after finish that work, then I go there. So I hope it's still it's not only work, it's like it's still I have a good relation with these people. A lot of time these people are uh, calling me that, hey, Halal, how are you? And they are asking a lot of things. So it's also a good relation with these people because of I do stage photography. It's need to talk to the people and make the good relation. So all of this is really, it's not my like, it's not only this is the photography subject for photography project. It's a, also there is a good relationship with me. Yeah, with no, people. definitely. It's, it's, it's part of the work and you can see so that. I, I visit several times there. Yeah. So last question, I lied, my question's not the last one. The last one comes from Homaira Adiba. 
So oh. she says, thank you, Halal, for the wonderful presentation. I love them as always. I wanted to ask you how to narrow down an idea of visualizing something that's lost, for example. How did you come up with the idea of making a throne to bring back the lost palace? And would you have any suggestions for students or practicing artists who particularly are interested to work on projects that are lost or visually not there? Great question. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Adiba, for your question and joining this session. This is really, yeah, this is really important, that uh, important question. So I basically, when I, when I did, uh, when I planned that I worked, so it's a, it's a almost 10 to 12 years I traveled that places and I have a lot of, uh, like a lot of visual memory from that places. And, and I found that, I found that that is uh, some information in my research that the Chakpa Royal Placentia. So I, I, I have, I have, research on i have just searching that images of the chakma throne and asking to some of friend that uh, uh, gave me that the show me that the chakma throne how it it was so i found some of images uh, from my friends and some of images from me like so so then i made this chair and also i found that houses so I think that this this uh, when it's like it's a good good thing that for the for the photography student for the newcomer that when we go for the when you do the project uh, it's it's always I suggest that always go back and forth that you are uh, I'm thinking that. We're dealing that present situation, but we need to go always that back because that the present situation to the came here because of the that previous uh, previous uh, previous that the history lot of things. So when you just understand or uh, when you the understand the situation of things, so you, you must have to go back history and the present situation. So I think this is the, this is the way to think in the, the present and the history and doing this work. And the big thing is always talk to, talk to these people directly. That helps, helps me a lot. And also some of researchers or writer. I hope this is, uh this is the i don't know is uh, got your answer or not adiba but i think this is the this answer for you i don't know it's uh, connected or question or not thank you adiba Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining. This is going to be recorded and we're going to share it on social media. So um, please feel free to share it with anyone that you think um, is, would be interested. And um, again, thank you. And thank you, Halal, for the very inspiring work that you do.